Hello and welcome to the official launch of the BetLoader 2020-21, um, making it out like it's a big thing. Most of you will know how this works, you'd have had it before, but um, I'm going to give you the email address you need to contact me with so that I can send it out to you guys. I've just got a couple of tweaks to make to the guide before I send them out, so you can start firing those emails over. I'll hopefully have it out to you, like Monday, the absolute latest. I'm going to try and get it sorted tonight to send out Sunday. Um, I'm going to give you a quick run through of how things work in here for people that might be newer to it. Um, and yeah, the only thing I really ask from you guys is this is always free. Everything I put out there is for free. Um, you can have it whatever you do, whether you do this or you don't. But if you could do me a favor and like this YouTube video and you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, once I clear a thousand, I can do more like advanced content. So that would be a Brucey bonus for me and in turn for you guys as well. So without further ado, Facebook Cheltmental at gmail.com this year is where you need to send the email across to. Um, as I say, I'll make an update to the guide. Uh, get it sent out to everybody and then we can troubleshoot if we need to normally there's no problem so it'll be fine um, as I say I need to update the guide but there is a user guide that goes along with it to help you guys out with everything that's in there but we don't need to touch on that too much now we'll just go through the tool to give a few examples to see how it works um, for those of you that haven't seen it before and even people that have seen it maybe they'll find out some new bits from it so when you receive the file from me it won't have all my selections in there it will just have a handful one thing you want to be mindful of is when we add or remove these selections when they're first in there. But I'm going two, three steps ahead. The first thing you'll see is a yellow ribbon at the top. Um, it's probably worth mentioning now that this isn't compatible with Macs, Excel for Mac, because the, the VB code in the background needs a tweak, and I haven't got a Mac operating system on any of my virtuals to be able to write the code, so it's not done. And if you've got Excel, sort of, I'd probably say 2013, or before you might have some functionality issues. But if you do, let me know. I've probably got older versions I can bang out there. But basically, you'll get this that says enable editing. You'll click that. And then you'll see a second one that comes up about security warrants. Macros have been enabled. Now, this is in the guide. But once you've enabled both of those parts, it will start to work. You see there, I've still got the 28, 2019. I haven't even bothered to update the pop-up message. But hey-ho, we'll tweak that as well. So it will launch up like this. Um, and then because we've enabled macros, enabled content, we can do bits and pieces. The main thing you want to do now really is you want to save the file because if you don't save it into your local location, it'll probably just go a little bit weird. So save it anywhere you like, doesn't particularly matter. We'll just bang it in there for now. And then once it's saved, you shouldn't really have any problems. Now, if there was only a handful of selections, if you were to remove all of those, what will happen is the pivot table on this right-hand side that's filtered to just singles um, would clear, and then when you put in doubles, trebles, all that sort of stuff, you'd see all of them in this table on the right-hand side. So it can mess that up a little bit. Um, also, it would clear the true statement, which basically means if a horse is a non-runner or it's been void or anything like that, so it's not going to run, uh, but you've lost your anti-post money, it would be showing in this list as well, which we don't want to see. You'll just see loads of zero balances. And then when we look at the daily view, these filters again in here, Tuesday, true, they would have cleared if we get rid of everything. So again, it's in the guide, but basically the dummy data that's in there, just leave it to start off with until you've added some more stuff. Otherwise, you need to apply those filters, which isn't really that difficult. Anyway, um, best thing to probably go on with now is most people have seen this stuff before. I'm going to quick, click for a few of the tabs, but let you know where everything is. So the plus button up here is to add a selection. We're going to run through and we're going to do that. The minus button is to remove a selection or selections. So we're going to do a demo of that. This chart here, I do need to make a tweak to this. I've talked about this before. The implied chance at the bottom should be driven by their current odds. I haven't got a feed work into odds checker or racing post. I have had in the past. I have to keep tweaking it for my daily price alert stuff to come through. They just keep changing bits and pieces. So it's just a bit of a ball ache to do it. But the part we'll come on to a little bit later, this percentage side where we're typing in the current prices of horses, I can get this implied chance to feed off of that. So Bit, a couple of bits I need to still work on, but this will show you it. And then the top 10 returns. Now, obviously, when we've got these little dream weavers of multiple selections in there, um, I don't put too many multiples on, but they're still going to be probably the biggest paying results. You can tweak your bet type here. So let's say we wanted to get rid of the five folds. You can use the pivot or the slicer on the right-hand side. Left, sorry, I'm going all over the shop. So this, these are slicers over here. They're basically the buttons. You can click cancel and select one to remove them, or you can just click which one you want to view. So you can see there, we've still got trebles in there. Chop them out, chop the doubles out. So we're only looking at singles. And then it gives you a feel of what the price is going to be. We'll come on to unaccepted in a bit about why he's so big. The daily view is literally that. So this is ultimately what shows you 
everything that's going to start on the Tuesday, and then we can have a look across and see everything that starts on the Wednesday, the Thursday, the Friday, which is really handy um, just to get a feel of the coverage we've got in races, you know, see how things are going. You can see your returns listed there for everything, not just your singles, as it is on the main page. But also when we do the email, this is the sort of stuff that gets sent out. Um, so we'll, we'll come on to that again in a bit. Back to the home page. This is the part I was saying where you just see the singles. Now, you can change this to be whatever you want. I just like to see my singles in here to see what might be the biggest paying one. And then the infographic over this, the sort of styling of the cell, is driven by the value. So because we've got a big winner in here, everything else looks a bit small fry, but it just gives you a bit of a, a sight to it. Up here, we've got the stake percentage live, and we've got your single percentage. So those two numbers weren't on the earlier version from last year. I think this is important to see. Um, your live percentage, so obviously when we get nearer to Cheltenham, we've got a better idea of what's definitely running and what's definitely not. You'll see of your stakes what, what percentage of your money's live. So if you get near the festival and you've only got 50% live, then it gives you an honest opinion of where you're at as opposed to thinking one way or the other. Um, whether it's relevant to you or whether you want to look at it, it's up to you. The singles part of it, I think it's really important to strike singles in the majority, especially when we're getting big value on horses a long way out. If you start perming them up into doubles, trebles, and all that sort of stuff, if you do get any non-runners, obviously the risk is higher if you've got multiple selections, you're sort of giving away some of that value. So my target is 90% singles for the whole year. When it gets nearer the time, I might put a couple of little muggy doubles on and things like that, but so far, so good. Um, the... Wallet button, this is a nice little one because this is sort of the dream weaver. So within here, um, you can put the selections for results and then you can see how much money you might get back. So this is where we can start to plan bits and pieces. So let's just say, for example, let's pick one that is going to go in. I'm going to stick Benny in, right? Benny for the mayor's chase, just because Willie Mullins has put it out there and it's topical. Get 750 back for Benny G for the mayor's chase bit more now because we put some other bits in there and then you can see for say for example we put in uh, St. Roy for the champion hurdle and we peel him in you can see the returns that are coming out there that gives us a feel for above whether we've got them in any multiples whether we've got them in doubles and bits and pieces like that um, and then if we said let's just go is it champion chase or queen mother queen mum and then that will give us a feel again. So there's chunks of singles that have come out with those. And then these would be the results for, you know, the multiples if we had them to pay out a certain amount of money for us. So it gives us an idea that we can start to plan if these horses win, how much am I going to get back? Gives us a, a sort of insight to that. Um, the email icon kind of sounds fairly straightforward, but what happens is you can choose any day of the, of the festival. So when you get nearer to the, to the meeting, and then it will send you an email, an image of your selections for the day. So basically with the calendar icon we looked at before it will show you all of those um, but the, for the Tuesday it will show you everything that starts on the Tuesday and then a second email will be sent with just the selections that complete on the day you've chosen so say you've got an Arkle champion hurdle double that'll be in there if you've got an Arkle and Ballymore double it wouldn't be in there because it doesn't show for both days but you'd see it in the first email basically you get to see that um, the part underneath here you'll get a nice warning up here saying that if you update the race results then it will make a difference to it basically within here you can put a result in so again when we get to Cheltenham unfortunately most of us are going to be at home this year for it or all of us will be um, you can put the results in as they're happening so when we create that image for the next day to see how things are going or this table on the right hand side to see our singles you can put in the fact that I don't know Dusart's won the Supreme and then if you've got him in doubles with horses for latter races in the week it will move the money onto those so you don't have to look at it as a double anymore it will, it will calculate that for you which is handy because when you then create the picture you don't have to fiddle through what's won and what hasn't um, a stake in selection below this shows us the coverage we've got or how much has been staked on a particular selection now this isn't just necessarily singles this would count doubles so if we had a £10 double on Shishkin and Envoy it would sort of be double counted so you'd have the £10 added to both totals. So it just gives you a bit of a feel, to be honest with you. Um, and then we've got the same thing for race values, so you can see which races we're getting stuck into, which ones we're not. Um, because of the fact we've got Arkle listed as the top one, we can, we'll can we we'll use that as uh, an example in a minute. We've also got the option to look at the lost stakes so we can see which races we've had a mare in and we've not actually managed to get our money through to the festival. Now, the percentage one, which is, you would have seen this on the last video I did last season for this, but it'll be new for a few of you in here. You can choose the races, um, all listed in there, 
I've tweaked it about now with where the running orders should be. I know we know days for definite, I'm not 100% sure on times, but they're in as they are. And if I need to tweak them to make things work for the latter date, then I will, of course, do that. Um, so, yeah, we, you can look at any of the races. So we've got Supreme, for example. We've got a few bits and pieces all over the shop, basically, back in stuff in here. But it gives us an idea of how much we've staked, how much you've lost in stakes, lowest payout, highest payout and then the representative odds for that lowest payout and for the highest payout so in this example 100 pounds staked on the supreme lowest power is 325 which is a nine to four poke highest payout is 720 which is just over a six to one poke basically the point of looking at this is to give you probably more of an insight to the value you've got and whether you can afford to steady up your markets now i get not much, but a bit of abuse for backing multiple horses, especially when I back quite a lot in a race. But you, the point of backing in advance is that you get the bigger prices. Now, I'm not going to go through and ex, sort of explain away with that, but you'll be able to put the prices of the horse for its current odds on this right-hand side. And when you do this, it will change your relative or your percentage chance of it. So your relative odds, the percentage chances as they show up on there. So we'll look for Dusart. Uh, I don't know what he is now. I think he's probably 20s, but we'll just put him in as 16s. So you can see now, we know the percentage chance is a 16 to 1 point, so it's 5 bit percent. And then this is where it gets important to look at what's on the right-hand side of it. So Fernie Hollow, I think he is 10 to 1. So not a huge squeeze on there. Bally Adam, I mean, the Cheveley thing, we don't even know he's going to be going there, do we? Hence why I'm all over the shop with it. I don't even know what price Bally Adam is. Let's just put him as 14s. Um, and then we can go Malone Road. God knows, 50s, who cares? We would check that on odds checker. I'll show you that for the ARCA example, but just for the purpose of doing it now. Now, you see the green dots on the right-hand side. That means we've got a better price than they currently are. The red icon means it's worse, and then an amber icon would mean we're about the same. So what you kind of want to see is that your percentage chance in terms of relative odds, ideally, is in between these two, which is good, because that means that you're... You, you know you've made some sort of value in there, so we have. So our percentage chance is in between those two numbers. If you, you it is possible to get your percentage chance at a, a lot better than what your lowest payout would be, so you can you know give yourself an even like a, a really strong position to be in. So although we've only winning and winning as a nine to four shot here for the three hundred twenty five quid, if our relative chance was literally like fifty fifty, so an even money poke, then we've made some monster value because we're getting lowest nine to four on an even money poke. And best case scenario, we're getting sort of six to one about it. So you can put those things in there. This is where the totals will work out for your forecast festival winners. So again, it's worked on implied chance. So for example, here for the Supreme, we're about 25%. If we had four races of this, it would say down the bottom, well, percentage wise, you're due to get a winner one of those four races. As you add these in, um, they'll stay in there until you go in and change them. You can clear. It does give you a warning. And if you click yes, that clears them for every single race. So it will take a second to refresh. But if we go back and forth, you'll see they're now gone. So really, you don't want to be like, you, I haven't set anything up to clear them individually. But if you needed to change something, you could just go in and type each one individually. If you need to clear them, that will just clear everything. So we'll move on to the R course. We'll give you a bit more of a live example. Um, or oh, maybe before that, we're going to flip flop. We're going to go back to something else. And then we're going to come to this. So unaccepted. I've backed in a like a novelty multiple. Uh, it was the day that Captain McGinnis was going on. I just fancy taking him on a little bit. There was a request a bet put up by somebody, sent to me in a message. I thought, you know, that looks like a fair shout um, for the sake of a bet. And I had some money in my Hills account, so I just did that. But what we'll do is we'll go and add something because Benny Juju, as I mentioned before, is Willie Mullins has said that she's had a little bit of a setback, but she doesn't appear that much anyway. And that she'll be going... Uh, Hopefully she'll be there for Cheltenham and probably maybe over fences. And I touched on her for the Mayor's Chase before. Hey ho, let's put some more on. So she has shortened up a bit now. So what I did this afternoon when I got the news was I had another bit on her for Bet365. Again, it's the cash out option, which is great. Um, and then I put stuck her in a couple of multiples with um, Fernie Hollow and appreciated just because Willie Mullins mentioned some targets. Again, I don't really do multiples very often, but hey ho. So if we were going to add these sorts of bets in, you'll see that the bookmaker gets greyed out as soon as you've added one. That's purely because if you're going to add more than one selection, it must be with the same bookmaker if you're doing multiples. So we'll stick the 25 quid that we've had on Benny there. That'll make a difference to how much we'll win for her. So you can see down there, she's currently 750. She'll shoot up, so that's good. And then because we've got a couple more, we'll go Ferdy Hollow for the Supreme. I don't even, I think he was 10s. 
on Bet365. <clears throat> so we're going to add him in and then appreciate it. Who I think will go Albert Bartlett, but let's go get a bit of cover. Um, bang him in there. So you can see now, because we've put the multiple selections in, it's given us the different lines we'd have for them. So if you had done a paint, you would just put the pound, 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 for example. And then if you've done a couple of paintings, you can clip, keep, click, keep stakes. And then when you add your new selections in, it will remember how much you've staked. If it was a free bet, you'll check that box. And then when it gets to non-runner no bet, you'll check this box for non-runner no bet. The main reason for that is if it's non-runner no bet and you go in to remove a horse later on to say it's not running, this will recalculate what your returns will be. So if you have a lucky 15 and a horse doesn't run, it will rework out what those the, the payout will be for those um, remaining selections. So pretty good, I think. And if it's a free bet, it knows to take the stakes out um, and it works out in the calculation. But ultimately with this one, I did £7 doubles I think £2.75 treble sounds about right so we're going to bang that in and then that will work out those multiples for us and it will add it in to the slip so that's adding selections again it's all in there it's fairly self-explanatory you're not really going to break if you go there and do anything we can now see that those selections have been added in you can see how rich I'm going to be when it happens if we need to remove something so we can look at the unaccepted one so the table on the left hand side like probably don't go in there and do stuff with it but if you want to you can go in there and you can play about you just need to either wait till you put another selection in to refresh the pivots or you can manually refresh just by right clicking and refresh um unaccepted here so basically it was a 20 pound bet as small on the screen but it was a 20 pound bet the actual odds on hills were 150 you can boost it so we got up to 180 odd pays out a reasonable amount of money. So there's two ways of looking at this. I could have put the £20 single on and then I could have played the money up, which is what would have happened with a lot of other bets. But because it's a related double, I ended up getting the bigger price. So he was a 7-2 poke that he went off at, I believe. Pa -da -da -da. Um, so that'd be 90 quid. And then the return's like 3 6 5 uh, oh, I think. Well, 3 6 5 3. So if we were to divide that by 90, so the reason I'm saying 90 is 20 pound at 7 to 2 would have been 90. That comes out as about 40.5, maybe 40.58 as a decimal. So I could really put this in as 20 pounds, sorry, 90 pounds at 40.58. Um, and then obviously my total stake would go up. But in this instance, because it was a related double, I wouldn't have got that 40 to 1 after, so I would leave it as it is. If we were to go in and tweak that, we can go in here to type in unaccepted. Now, what will happen with this one, I know he's only in there once, it will highlight the selections that the named horse is in. Um, it might be that you've cashed out a few bets and you want to chop them off, so you can go through and you can check the ones that you want to keep in or the ones that you want to remove, and then you can remove them completely if you either cashed out or you just want to take them out, or typically you want to remove them non-runner no bet. So if you know they're injured and they're out for the season, remove it non-runner no bet because that will keep your stakes as they are, so truthfully, and it will work out your lived value a lot better. Um, one thing I haven't put in here, which I kind of half wanted to do, but I didn't bother, was put out the cash out amount if we had. So I've backed horses, I don't know, let's just say Envoy Alain last year. If you'd have backed him anti-post for the Supreme, he obviously didn't run on it, but if you backed him at a big price, you probably could have cashed out for a profit. That sort of thing's not factored in here, but no, they're frills that we don't necessarily need. But if we wanted to remove them, we'll just click the button there. If we wanted to remove non-runner no bet, it will change the bet. As I say, if it was in multiples and it's non-runner no bet, it will work out. So you just click whichever one you want. If you make any mistake, just go back to your previously saved version of it. So what we'll do now is, conscious that I don't want to keep this too long, but we'll just have a look at the R call and you can see a feel for where I am with it. So Shishkin, I, I really like Shishkin. Like I genuinely think he's going to be... I don't, it's hard to say like as good as Envoy, but I just feel like for the for the festival, I just think he's going to be the one for the Arkle. So I've had a, a reasonable bet on him now. I think I've got, um, well, we can see with the stake odds there, I've got a reasonable amount on him. Felix De G, I just backed him for the sake that I knew he'd shorten up. Um, he's one of those that needs to be out in front on his own. If it did cut up in the Arkle because everyone was scared of Shishka and it was a small field, like he might be okay. He was just too big. He's about 20s now, so happy days. And Classical Dream was more pie in the sky sort of thing that I was just working out where he's going to go, former Supreme winner. And because I'm keen on Shishka, I thought, you know what, I can, I can afford to get a bit of cover at prices. So what we'll do is we'll look at the Arkle market. So I would just go to odds checker to take the price and then again it's entirely up to you how you want to put the prices in so i'm going to be harsher on myself so i'll always put top price in there so three to one shishkin and we can see what some other ones are um phoenix to g's 20s unaccepted 20s and where's classical dream big probably yeah 26 with hill so the boost that i've put in <clears throat> on here is 28.63 
So again, like you could cheat a little bit, couldn't you, and say it's still it's 25 to 1 and you're beating the price, but we haven't for classical dreams, so we'll leave them as the same. As you can see, that's gone amber, not the red or the green as it was before. We'll stick the 3 to 1 that is Shishkin in there. We'll stick the 20 to 1 that is Felix de G. And we'll stick the 20 to 1 that is unaccepted. Now, I mean, this is like obviously a ridiculous one because I had him in that stupid double. He's probably not going to go and win it, but he's keen to know that Willie Mullins said that they're going to stick him with the two-mile route. So who knows? Could be a lively one. But basically, we can see here £245 is staked. The lowest return is 7.15. So it's just under two to one. Um, we can see Shishkin gets a bit more than that. Highest payout the big one from unaccepted and because of the fact that I've got him in that dodgy multiple it's going to make the representative odds look quite big basically we've got a 38% chance of winning this race that representative lowest odds there as you can see is higher than our percentage chance at the moment so that is when you know you're in a good position now we can get those percentages to have a bigger golf between them um, so, so say for example if I had another fiver on classical dream that would put Shishkin as the lowest payout it would only be 250 stakes so that would actually make the representative odds a bit higher um, <clears throat> so basically you can shore up the markets if you get to a position like I was last year with the mayor's hurdle where I had Benny and Honeysuckle both covered so I was basically going to win it was like 90% chance they were going to go and win between those two at the odds that they were <clears throat> my bet was I can't remember about 100 quid and I think I got 225 back from either of them, something around about that. So I was getting five to four my money. You can sort of afford to back the second and third in if they're 10 to one for a score, you know, just to cover yourself. But you can have a look at this and it gives you a feel of where you're at. Um, <clears throat> because I do think it is important to get cover, especially this far out in there. But that's basically as much as I'm going to go into for this particular video. If you've got any questions, you can let me go. Any comments, feedback, all that sort of stuff, stick it in the comments below or just let me know. That email address again is facebookcheltmental at gmail.com. As I say, it's free, always will be. I'll get it out probably Monday. Need to get the guide updated and get a couple of tweaks still made to the tool. Um, I always repeat, really appreciate your guys' support. The anti-up post will be coming out probably Wednesday. We'll do that after up in the anti, so good timing to get this in there. Um, as I say, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and see you on the other side, guys.